it's April and there's plenty of stuff to talk about in the behind the scenes as well as the update that was released just yesterday uh, about the dual wielding and dun uh, charming imp in Dungeoneering but firstly RS3 beta pro program so this is basically an upgrade to RS and uh, it's going to be something truly amazing as they say it's mainly to do with graphics but also a bit to do with the interface and how you can customize it there are two parts the first part is um, you'll, you'll have beta access to the HTML5 engine and you'll be able to use your main character and gain rewards and XP so basically it will just be uh, because it's not, it's nothing major in terms of game mechanics. It's just uh, graphics and such. Uh, the HTML5 engine will be the beta will be open next week, um, and registration started now. So if you want to register, uh, you can simply go to the home page and then click here, the first post. Well, it might not be the first when you guys uh, select it, but it'll be there anyway. And as you can see, there are two things that gonna that they're gonna test out the first thing is HTML5 client which is out next week and um, you can register for one week but then you've also got the interface system which is called an alpha system because uh, I don't think you can test it in the same way you can test a beta um, they're gonna be like because it's uh, it's not quite just graphics it's got some other stuff interface and stuff that may give an advantage to those people that are using it uh, over the people that are just playing normal RS uh, this is going to be an alpha system, so it's basically going to be like the combat beta last year, where it will just have a new, a separate account. It won't. It, it's not the live game. It's not ESC. It'll be ESC. You know what I mean? It's not the live game. It's a separate account and separate things. And you can upgrade uh, game save to upgrade your character from the live game into the new thing. And they might change this. They might make it in uh, the same way as the HTML5, but. Basically, the alpha by alpha system will be launched a week later, so the seventeenth. I mean, twenty uh, fourth. The HTML five client starts on the seventeenth, and the registration is open for one week until the tenth of April. Obviously, you can have a look at the FAQ. There are loads of stuff there uh, if you have any other questions. But I'm just going to go ahead and sign up for this. Uh, so just click sign up. We've got a page here, and this gives gives you some information. Obviously, you won't be guaranteed to go in. Uh, to get to be part of this unless you're a gold or silver membership um, of RuneScape uh, that was sometime in January or February I believe I didn't sign up for it because my current membership was cheaper but if you did I think you'll have uh, automatically you'll automatically be able to take part in both alpha and beta so yeah so I'll just go ahead and sign in looks like they need my password so I'll just uh, pause this while I type in my password and stuff as you can see I've just signed in and this is all it gave, uh, came this is all that it gave me and it says if you're not selected don't worry because all members will have access to the beta program in the future so this isn't like an early access um, they're going to talk more about it later on and it's probably going to be released in the summer but yeah let, let's go back to behind the scenes and and yeah that's one of the main things so next one is dungeon ring dual wielding and chump collectors um, well basically they've just added dual wielding to dungeoneering and also they've added ranged and uh, mage shields to dungeoneering and the main thing is that they've added this imp that costs 100k tokens and basically it will collect all the charms that you drop but you can select whether it collects certain charms or whatever and you can also um, you can also uh, get some xp if you want the imp to consume the charms and just give you instant so many xp but that's really small uh, I'm just going to go to the live game and show you guys uh, buying it and stuff. Hey guys, I've just bought the Charming Imp for 100k tokens. And the only requirement apart from the 100k tokens is a summoning skill of 21. Um, it will be able to collect charms as well as consume them. So if you just talk to it, um, if you ask what do you do, it will tell you that it can uh, carry... Uh, charms it will collect charms but you need inventory space to make sure it goes into your inventory when it collects them and uh, if you ask if do you keep any of the charms um, you can say you can choose which one it wants to keep and you can also um, you can also configure which charms it wants to keep but here's just a proof that uh, it can uh, it can it can collect the charms and give you some XP what's in it for you 
impart a little of its summoning XP for each one. So I'm just going to test it out. I'm going to go to Walter Fiends and test out whether it collects the charms as well they drop they have a high drop rate of crimson charms so I'm just going to go there and check if it collects uh, the crimson charms that it should so I'll just come back to you guys once I get there alright guys I'm at Walter Fiends I'm just going to configure the imp to uh, to keep crimson charms obviously you probably don't want it to keep crimson charms you want it to keep gold and greens because you're not really going to use it and especially if you're high summoning 99 summoning you're probably going to be using crimsons and blues mostly so if you let it consume them then it will give you a small amount of xp now i'm just going to see how much xp it gives you if uh, if it collects crimson charms so first it sh i should get this in the first kill and uh just see right so that's the amount of xp i have now kill it and it should be a crimson there you go 12 xp so it gives you 12 xp per crimson i assume that's a crimson because that's the highest drop rate now uh, i'll just get back to you guys once i config configure it to collect crimsons into my inventory right so i'll just configure it to keep golds and greens there you go so that's probably what you should be doing if you're a high level summoning or 99 summoning in fact if you're 99 summoning you probably don't want any charms but I just want to keep them anyway and as you can see it gives you it gives you the crimson charm in your inventory and you obviously need a space so that's about it there's not much to it and I'd probably say this is a very very good update for summoners especially if you're low summoning because Usually the most time taken is probably in collecting the charms themselves rather than killing, especially if you're rock barraging Dagonoths or, you know, killing them really quickly like I usually do when I'm not vidding. Um, and most of my time is spent collecting charms rather than killing the things, especially in, if you're a high uh, combat, if you've got high combat stats and such. So it's a good update. So on to the next section. Hey guys, I decided to test out dual wielding and the stats and see if it compares with the actual RS um, if the dungeoneering dual wielding compares with the actual RS so firstly just made a selection of Bathurst items equipment because it's quite cheap and it should this sort of behavior should be the same for higher levels um, in terms of like proportion so I'll, t I'll explain it now so you can see damage and accuracy Accuracy 100, damage 371 for the Bathurst Maul. Should be the same for 2H. It's just a slashing rather than crushing. And now uh, we have the Bathurst Longsword. 221 damage, only 221, but it's fast style. And then we have um, 321 altogether. This has 371, but it's average speed. And the two put together have... Uh, 331 yeah that's my maths I think my math is right and uh, 331 damage so it's a bit less damage but that is made up for its fast speed so I do believe they've uh, they've stuck to their word that dual wielding has the same damage output as uh, two-handers so that's good and as you can see has a lower damage output if you have a shield which is also the same as a live game and this behavior should uh, should be replicated in higher levels so you should expect to see that higher levels um, higher level tier higher tiers also have this same damage output the two handers will have the same damage output as the uh, dual wield like you can see here so if you do the maths you can probably work it out that uh, the speed of each attack and stuff you can probably work out the damage per second the damage rating per second and obviously the accuracy is the same that's as expected now there's one thing about this which I'm not sure but I believe that uh, the offhand versions of the main hand items that are dropped by bosses like primal longsword by blink you'll probably get the offhand primal longsword dropped by blink as well so it may take a while to get both of them since uh, before there were 11 items it could drop 11 uh, different tiers of longsword now it has um, it has 11 of the offhand as well so I'm not sure whether it drops two at once the main hand and the offhand or whether it just drops one of them so if it does only drop one of them at once then 
the drop rate will be 1 in 21 for whatever it is you're looking for. If you want the Primal Longsword, the drop rate is 1 in 21, but obviously if you are in bigger teams, it has a high chance of dropping the Primal item rather than the Prometheum. Probably 100%, close to 100% maybe, uh, from what I've seen. Don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's about it guys. And uh, final thing, if you're looking for a cheap, as in a a low dungeon range level but a high l actual level of item to wear um, obviously the two handers are dropped by uh, by level 113 dungeon ring boss I do believe but the primal mole is uh, two handed and it's dropped by uh, a ramanaut which is abandoned floors and also you can also get um, the rapier which has the same stats as the longsword the primal rapier dropped by uh, a rift splitter boss I'm not as sure of his exact name but it's between floors 18 and 29 so if you want to check out the primal two uh, dual wielded items primal uh, rapiers which have the same stats as uh, primal two-hander and primal longsword the same damage output and the same stats as primal uh, longsword which is dropped by blink which requires 95 95 dungeoneering this only requires uh, something like 36 or 35 dungeoneering to access and obviously if you're in a bigger team and harder like complexity and stuff you'll have a high chance of getting it but if you want to test out the best your world weapons at a low dungeoneering level I suggest you go kill the boss uh, go do floors 18 to 29 and get the primal rapiers off hand and main hand and they should have the t same damage output as a primal mole and primal 2h and primal longswords as well so that's a low requirement for an overpowered weapon so yeah it's pretty good I'm gonna try and get that myself so on to the next section next up there's a castle wars update now this hasn't been updated a lot if any uh, if much at all since its release and uh, the most most important one is going to be its uh, its graphics and rewards now they also talk about a bit of a change to the trim completion escape requirement uh, 5k castle wall stick it's a bit too much even for a trimmed uh, in my opinion anyway but they're gonna change it after some feedback from on the forums high level forums so that's gonna be pretty good hopefully it will be something better than 5k tickets but talking of tickets they're gonna change it to uh, new silver and gold tickets so basically if you um, if you play a game you'll get silver tickets regardless of win loss or draw so it's all about taking part not really because you also get gold tickets so yeah um, you'll get gold tickets if you win or lose and you'll be spent on more sort out items and only um, awarded if plays win or draw you'll be able to wear helms in the arena and use the altars in the spawn room wait less time for the game uh, due to lobby improvements which is a good time a good thing because you tend to wait a lot I haven't played it much but apparently you'll also get um, the armor will also have a hybrid use which is a good thing as well because um, it was just one class I believe beforehand so that should be pretty good and also for the dual arena hopefully um, it's going to be based you can also have an instance automatically generated uh, if you can't get into one of the arenas already there and um, and you'll not miss out on your duel which is good but obviously they should do something about uh, gambling and staking there because it just it does ruin the game but as for another time next up we have the hunter charms if you guys uh, have had some hunter daily challenges uh, sometimes you get these so you go to the gnome stronghold and then uh, hunt charm sprites it's a bit time consuming and it, it apparently it was intended uh, for hunters to gather summoning charms but it's very very slow so it's not very good and um, obviously they're going to be improving this and again making it more fun easy to use and more rewarding and you'll get more much more XP um, and it will be scaled with your hunter level which is also a good thing as higher levels it takes longer to level up so you need more XP as well for each uh, each equivalent catch as it were you'll get many more charms as well and many more blue and crimson charms. I've played it a bit for my daily challenges and I can tell you it's not fun at all doing it just for charms. I'm just doing I was just doing it for the hunter XP actually. And you can also get a mystical charm slice uh, apparently just to add a bit of flavor to it uh, using it as a wild card. And 
you can also upgrade your stick which you have to use to hunt these uh, sprites and you'll, you'll get XP boosts to all hunting uh, around RuneScape I do believe and uh, increased chance to get new charm slices which is good XP boost to hunting always a good thing because it's a pretty boring skill even if it's pretty fast depending on your method of course and finally this um, uh, second last, third last uh, ESE update um, people have been talking about how um, how levels don't matter that much in the ESC and it's more about equipment so they're gonna make hard and stats mean far more in combat which means overloads will be much more useful now which is a good thing as well because obviously unoverloaded and overloaded must have should have a large difference at the moment it doesn't because I've tested it out and stuff and also people have talked about it and the high stats will have significant advantages which is also a good thing and uh, that's about it as far as um, the changes are concerned uh, the major changes anyway armor will be classed as offensive defensive or hybrid gear which is which is, which is interesting because bandos is going to be offensively oriented as they say and I expect bandos to rise because of this but obviously you want defensive armor if uh, if you're like tanking or in a high really tough boss fight like next t I say tough but it's not that hard <laughs> and uh, yeah that will improve some of the game programming to control basic hit chances so obviously offensive armor will give you a high hit chance so it will link it to accuracy not just your damage as before and most importantly they're going to be changing potions and prayers as well so look out for changes to soul split and um, the three high le ni level 95 offensive prayers like turmoil torment and uh, anguish and also overload as i just said private god boss this is a really interesting one because um, it looks i'm not quite sure from the way they phrased it but it looks like you can be you can uh, hire god boss your own version of the dungeon and uh, it'll be quite frustrating as as, ca as you can relate to I guess when you're getting crashed or there's so many people in the same room especially in Bandos pre EOC more than post EOC but still and uh, you can it's a bit like it's a bit like Dominion Tower uh, you can um, customize the mode so that you can choose which one is which mode you want it to be and apparently you have new combat mechanics if you've completed uh, the world wakes uh, in the style that you fought those monsters and I'm not gonna say well they've really given it away alright I'll just say it basically you fight um, you fight I think three is it all of them no yeah yeah you fight all the bosses from uh, GWD um, in the world wakes they're much easier than GWD but apparently these guys will be really really tough and you can fight with a group and your friend a with you and a group of your friends and it'll offer far more valuable drops than their normal uh, counterparts in the DWD so I'm not sure whether this will actually give armor and stuff and uh, all the items and stuff um, like Calfight King how he can make instances and stuff but hopefully it will but this does also mean that GWD is likely to crash but something they try to do to contract it is they're gonna have a small GP fee now that probably isn't too much as they say but still it'll be a significant money sink but it depends we'll just have to see how this turns out and it I'm really looking forward to this because I'm a fan of GWD and um, well I don't really ten tend to get crashed but should be fun to uh, to get this private god boss and finally have XP additions now this isn't this is just something some common sense stuff like when you make uh, when you make unfinished potions you don't get any XP and uh, people make money off that as well because people don't do just make unfinished potions they tend to make the unfinished, unfinished potions and finish them for XP now you can get XP for making unfinished potions and that will probably bring their value down which might be useful I don't know depends on uh, what your role is I used to make money by making unfinished potions and selling them obviously I don't get XP now I'll get XP so more people will be doing it so it will be less profitable so that's about it I'll stop rambling now hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes I highly recommend you sign up to RS3 as soon as possible and that's about it Hope you guys enjoyed this and the month of April to come in which there are a lot of updates.